Ferrovial has announced its financial results for the first half of 2020. Results have been impacted by the COVID-19 global pandemic, as well as government measures to reduce social contact. Throughout the COVID-19 situation, safeguarding the health and safety of employees and clients has been the first priority. The company is also committed to supporting the community in this situation and has created a fund Ferrovial Together COVID-19, which has raised close to 9 million euros for vulnerable families, healthcare sector and research on the development of a vaccine. COVID-19 started impacting operational results during the second half of March and continued with higher incidents in the second quarter of the year. Toll road traffic has steadily increased since April lows as movement restrictions eased and the economy reopened. However, the upswing of coronavirus cases in Texas since mid-June and the extension of the state of emergency in Toronto have taken their toll. UK airports traffic has also been strongly impacted on the back of reduced flights, border closures and traveller quarantines. Construction has seen an uneven impact from COVID-19 throughout the different geographical regions, though maintained high levels of production, especially in the US and Poland. Mitigating measures have been taken throughout the company, including restructuring processes, efficiency measures, cost reductions, capex plans revisions and utilising flexibility measures provided by the different governments. Consolidated revenues stood at 2.9 billion euros, up 12% like for like, with higher construction revenues partially offset by lower contribution from toll roads. Total dividends from projects received by Ferrovial reached 133 million euros. M&A transactions year-to-date included the sale of Broad Spectrum completed for 485 million Australian dollars, of which 20 million were completed in July. And the sale of a 5% of Budimex, which was also closed for 58 million euros. Ferrovial is focused on protecting its record high liquidity and strong financial position to face the current macroeconomic situation. As of the end of June, Liquidity X Infrastructure stood at a record 7.5 billion euros, while Net Cash Position, also X Infrastructure, stood at 1.7 billion euros, including discontinued operations. Ferrovial's main infrastructure assets also enjoy strong financial positions and high liquidity levels. In the first half of 2020, we've seen the COVID-19 pandemic spreading throughout the world, and that has reduced economic activity in most sectors of the economy. In our toll roads in Texas, we've seen very low traffic, especially in April, but have recovered since. And we're seeing patterns that are close to what we saw before the pandemic in terms of uh, peaks in the afternoon, even some in the evening. So patterns are encouraging, but of course, now with the surge in COVID cases, we've seen a temporarily st stoppage or reduction of that recovery. In um, the 4070 TR, the recovery also uh, was there, but slower than in, uh, in Texas. Uh, probably because there was more restrictions uh, in Toronto than in, in other areas. But in July, we start to see some reduction on the speed of the alternative, like the 401, and that's uh, encouraging. Also, it's important to bear in mind that all these projects have ample liquidity, and that uh, gives us comfort uh, with the uncertain health uh, issues and should uh, feed the dividends in the, in the coming months. In terms of uh, air travel, uh, we've seen uh, very reduced air travel with governments imposing restrictions, uh, travel bans, quarantines, and that has affected our airports. Uh, and with this very low traffic, our airports have been uh, involved in uh, cost reduction initiatives, also avoiding non-required capex. Of course, these um, initiatives have one of costs or write-offs that have affected the, the results. And they have also negotiated preemptive uh, uh, waivers. Heathrow has sample liquidity, even with no revenues, it could face commitments for the next 12 uh, months comfortably. And with uh, the normal revenues that could be projected now, it could get very well into 2022. Also, we should remember that Heathrow is a regulated asset. The next regulatory period starts in January 2022, and we should have a reset of traffic projections uh, then uh, with the updated view of the, of the industry. Also, regulation takes into account in the loud return that there's some risk to the business. Of course, this pandemic is way beyond that. Um, in terms of uh, construction, we must say that the production level activity has been quite high but we have incurred additional costs, 44 million euros related to the uh, 
pandemic, additional costs and expectation of uh, uh, higher costs uh, in, some, in some contracts. And of course, we have logged in some complaints to, or claims to, to try and recover this, but we have not recorded anything in the, in the PNL. Why? Because it could take time and the outlook of uh, the likelihood of the recovery is uncertain. In construction, I must highlight also the performance of uh, Budimex uh, and Weber in terms of uh, margins, good positive margins, and the former Budimex have also shown very good cash flow performance. In services, uh, the most affected probably was uh, Ferrovial Services Spain uh, in the activities related to infrastructure maintenance, because other activities have been quite resilient, like waste uh, treatment, for instance. And uh, Amy has shown less impact than, uh, than Spain and a uh, reasonable level of, uh, of activity. In terms of uh, cash, the first six months have been much better than the comparable of uh, 2019 with uh, much better working capital uh, performance. And also we recorded the closing of the sale of broad spectrum and also a 5% stake in, uh, in Budimex. In the end, we close with a net cash position north of 1.6 billion and a liquidity of 7.5 billion euros. And also, this should uh, provide a strength to uh, uh, really um, look forward with the un uncertain health uh, issues still ahead. And in terms of uh, um, assets, we should remember that our main infrastructure toll road assets are in areas like Dallas, Fort Worth and Toronto where the economy is well diversified and should restart growth once the health issues are behind us.